we're starting chapter 10, section 5, dealing with parabolas. Now, I want you guys to notice something. You should have put this into your journal right here, all the information we're going to cover right now. But you'll notice if the x values are being squared, the parabola opens up or it can open down. Whereas, over here, look at this formula. Oh, the y's are going to be squared over here, and that's going to either open up to the right, or, or it could also open up to the left. Okay, So this right here, everybody, this technically would not be considered to be a function. It's an equation, but it's not a function. Because it does not pass the what? It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Okay, if you remember that from back in the day. Over here, this is a function. Okay? Yes. Yes, she's on her way. She's not in trouble. It's Isabel. We are Isabel. She's not in trouble. trouble. All right. Oh, if it's if it's Mr. Underwood. All right. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to build the parabola that goes with this equation. So right now, on your paper, you should have written down x squared minus two x. Minus 8y plus 17 equals 0. Now, the x's are being squared. So the formula or the standard equation for this right here is going to be x minus h, close parentheses, squared, equals 4 times p, open parentheses, y minus k. This is going to be your standard equation that we're going to build our parabola into. Okay, you're not used to seeing it like this, okay? But notice, only one of these is being squared. So we only have to actually complete one square. We don't have to complete two squares when we're dealing with ellipses and hyperboles. Answer? Now, which one do you think we have to complete the square? Oh, I know. X. X, yeah, X, deal with the X value. So here we go. Put X squared minus. 2x plus an empty box. Notice right here, I'm going to take all this, everybody. I'm taking this. I'm just going to chuck it across the equal sign. What's going to happen to everything that I move across the equal sign? Negative. Sign change. Yep, sign change. 8y and a? Negative. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> Whatever that was. That was fun. All right, so we move it across the equal sign. All right? Once again, now we have to complete the square. Whatever I put here, I also have to put right there. So once again, here's a reminder. This is always going to be the B value divided by 2, and then you have to square it. This, negative 2, is the B value. So what is half of negative 2? Negative 1. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. What's negative 1 times negative 2? 1. Boom. So you put a 1 here? Yeah. Thank you. Now, what does this factor, what is all of that factor? Ooh. X minus 2. Close. X minus 1 squared equals 8Y minus 2. 16, because all I did was combine the negative 17 and the 1. Now we're almost done, everybody. We're almost done with our equation. We got to, yeah, we have to Four is a constant. Well, four is a constant, yeah. All right, P will depend on your equation, all right? But you guys see how we just have one Y inside the parentheses? If you have one Y inside the parentheses, that means we have to factor this 8 out. So our final answer for our equation is X minus 1 squared equals 8, open parentheses, and put y minus 2. You had to factor the 8 out of the 8y, and you had to factor the 8 out of the negative 16. So basically, what did I do? I divided that by 8, and I divided that by... So where's the 4p coming from? Right here. So that, that is equal to 4p. So that's p to 2. Yeah, so right here, I want you to put this to the side your p-value that you're going to need for all of your information eventually, all right? The p-value in this particular case is 2. Understand, every single time, the number that you factor out will be equivalent to 
four times your p value. Put that in your journal. All right, we're going to use this equation, everybody. Okay, we're going to use this equation to find all the pieces that we need to graph this parabola. Okay, so here's my standard form. My standard form says x minus your h value. So what is our h value in this particular case? One. The one, because it's x minus a one. Y minus K, ours is Y minus A, 2, so therefore our K, K value has to be 2. This is your vertex. This is different than a, than a hyperbola or an ellipse or a circle. The HK was always the center of your circle. It was the center mm -hmm. of your ellipse. It was the center of your hyperbola. Here, HK represents the vertex of the parabola. Yes. The focus is 1, comma. Now it says K plus your P value. Exactly. So we have k is 2. We found p equal to 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So we're going to put a focus at 1 comma 4. The axis of symmetry will be a vertical line going through all x values that are 1. We're going to draw this here in a second. So your axis of symmetry is x equals 1. And your directed, your, sorry, your directrix is going to be y equals the k value, which is a 2 minus a 2, which gets me to y equals 0. On your paper right now, what I need you guys to do is I need you to label every single one of these on your paper and in your journal. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this information, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this nice and clear. That's good. All right, the first thing I want us to do is we're going to plot the vertex. So Liz, where is the vertex located? One, two. One, two. So right here at one comma two. I want you to put a point on your paper and I want you to label that as the vertex. All right. Um, Audrey, where is the focus located in this particular problem? One, four. One, four. So here we have one, four. That right there is your focus. Okay. Um, Kinsey, what is the axis of symmetry? X equals 1. Okay, so right now I'm going to draw a vertical line where X is always equal to 1 going straight up and down. I'm going to label this as X equals 1, which is the axis of symmetry. All right? <laughs> All right, Shayla, where is the directrix located? Mm -hmm. Y equals zero, which is literally right here on the x-axis. That's where y is always equal to zero. All right, so this right here, this is everything graphed. Now the last thing I have to do is I actually have to graph the parabola. What's one point we know for sure the parabola is going to go through? I know mm -hmm. one, two. The vertex, so it's got to go through here. Mm -hmm. Now. There's a concept right here that we have not talked about. And this is concept that deals with the absolute value of whatever 4 times p is. In this particular case, our, our absolute value is going to be equal to the number 8. That's what we got. 4p was equal to 8. So the absolute value of 8 is 8. This, everybody, this distance right here, the absolute value of 4p is e equal to the concept called the lattice Rectum. All right. Now I want to. This right here, the lattice rectum right here is a distance that goes through the focus right here. So I want you guys to understand that distance is eight units. You're going to go from the focus out four units and to the left four units, which gives me a total of. Eight units going all the way across. So I want you guys to put a point right here, right here, and I want you guys to understand that that distance, everybody, is referred to as the lattice rectum, which gives you kind of the depth of your parabola. Okay? So now I'm going to draw it. From the vertex, I'm going to go up, and I'm going to go through this point right here. And I'm carefully going to draw going down to this point as best I can. Okay, 
So Liz, you had a question. You're like, well, how are we going to draw this without? You can't really plug it into the graphic calculator. How are we going to draw it? This is the concept that you're going to use every single time to kind of create your graph. If you need to graph the the lattice graph. Now, something that's interesting about parabolas, right? With this concept from the focus. If you go from the focus over to this point right here, all right. How many units go from here to right there? How many? Four. Units? Four. So I want you to notice something. From here to right there is four units. There's four units going there. Now, from this point going straight down to your directrix, four. That's four. So I want you guys to understand something. You guys probably have a satellite dish at some point in your life. You've probably seen those. Those are parabolic in nature. What, what do the signals do? The signals hit the satellite dish and they go to this thing called the receiver. The receiver, everybody, is located, think about this, this was a, a parabolic dish. That receiver, all of those signals come in and do what? They bounce off and then where do they go? They go to your focus, right, called the receiver, and that's how it works. All right, so understand, this distance of 4 is going to be the same distance right here. So any point on the parabola to the focus will be the same distance as it is to the directrix. Okay? And that is, by the way, that is problem number 1. I want you guys to attempt to do problem 2 on your own. Okay, why?